On this episode of China Uncensored, China shows Taiwan how to handle protesters. Hi, welcome to China Uncensored. I'm your host, Chris Chappell. Potentially hundreds of thousands took to the streets in Taiwan over the weekend to protest a trade pact that they feel will undermine their freedoms and give China too much control over their country. Taiwan is a democracy. People have a voice. And when they think the government has overstepped its bounds, the people can speak out. Clearly, democracy is a bad idea. I mean, look at this. Don't they know that social order is the cornerstone of stability maintenance? Well, don't worry. Chinese state-run media is here to explain to us why democracy is a bad idea and why these students are so bad for China. I mean, Taiwan. Sadly, it's only a matter of time before Taiwan collapses under the weight of its own democracy. But even though it's kind of embarrassing for the Chinese Communist Party that the thought of closer ties with them freaks Taiwanese people out so much that they're taking to the streets, it's also an opportunity for the party. An opportunity to show just how much better and more efficient their technocratic authoritarian rule is than this messy democracy stuff. Take, for instance, the city of Maoming in Guangdong province. Now, the local government, in conjunction with state-owned oil giant Sinopec, has decided on a half-billion-dollar expansion of the city's existing petrochemical plant to include a parasiline plant. Did they discuss every tiny little detail with the people or the other <laughs> opposition political parties? No. And that's how people want it, because as we all know, if we read the local government's newspaper, Mao Ming Daily, parasiline is an important element for a happy life because it's used to make things like plastic water bottles and polyester. But there are some people with ulterior motives who would have you believe parasiline is a dangerous industrial chemical that can damage the central nervous system, liver and kidneys, and cause cancer and death. Well, that is true, but only if you're exposed to a lot of it. So a few outlaws, as Mao Ming City government called them, took to the streets. You can tell they're outlaws because the local authorities had told them a demonstration was illegal. So obviously, if you're doing something illegal, you're an outlaw. So rather than descend into the kind of anarchy that Taiwan did, where protesters and students think they have a voice in the government, police came to the scene and dispersed the outlaws. Except for that one policeman who joined the protesters. He's an outlaw. And don't worry, the authorities said no one was killed. Oh, that? Why, that's just one of the many photos from the protests that Chinese censors deleted before banning searches for Mao. Look, the problem in Taiwan is that people don't wholeheartedly love and trust their government like they do in China. Which is why the people of Mao Ming, not the outlaws, no, there's no way local officials could be disregarding public welfare for their own profit in this highly lucrative deal with a massive state-owned enterprise. I mean, in 2012 alone, 300 Mao Ming officials were investigated for graft, according to Beijing News. See how many officials the people were protected against? Would this kind of thing happen in a democracy? And only two were sentenced to suspended death sentences. So you can see why the Chinese trust their local leaders except for the outlaws. But don't worry, those anarchists are being taken care of. Look, democracy leads to protesting, which leads to chaos. And that's precisely why local party officials had to squash this protest. But you know what I think could solve all the problems in Taiwan? A few more parasiline plants. That'll help them lead a happy life. But sadly, all the attention China has been getting over Mao Ming, especially when it's cast in relief by everything happening in Taiwan, well, it's a tad embarrassing for the party. So after these darn protesters kept on protesting and all kinds of international media attention was beginning to focus on it, local authorities are now meeting with them and they say they won't build the plant if the public doesn't want it. Oh, I guess they stopped calling them outlaws. You see, who needs democracy? The government does whatever it wants until it pushes the people too far. An explosion happens, violent crackdown follows, word of it spreads on the Chinese internet, censors try to keep pace deleting things, international media attention spotlights the problem, state-run media steps in to reassure everyone, and the local government bends. That's a lot less chaotic than democracy. But really, these fears about parasiling are really overblown. As People Daily pointed out in an editorial last year, since the first PX plant was built in Shanghai in 1985, domestically at least 10 have been added. 
At present, they are all operating normally with no major accidents. As the New York Times reported, the same morning the People's Daily editorial was published, a parasiling plant in Zhangzhou, Fujian province, exploded. So, what are your thoughts? Leave your comments below and be sure to check out the Facebook and Twitter page for more. Thanks for watching this episode of China Uncensored. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.